So thank you, Kathy. Um, I'm going to begin my uh, uh, part of the presentation uh, from the point where we were brought uh, on board and uh, hired as the architect for the project. My name is Peter McRae, and I am uh, president and partner of McRae Architecture. Uh, we uh, do projects all over the country and I do it as a single member LLC. So I now call our practice model a national virtual architectural practice, which since the COVID-19 crisis, I've been giving lectures all over the country about how to work effectively remotely. So enough about me. Um, we were presented the project with some initial work that had been done by an architect in Milwaukee that did not happen to have a license in Ohio. And so we were brought on board to carry the project forward. Um, the first thing that I noticed is that this particular architect was a huge fan of Frank Lloyd Wright. And the uh, project that he designed was very much in the style of Frank Lloyd Wright's Unisonian Temple phase. So it was all made out of uh, concrete masonry units. Uh, he did a beautiful job of, of setting it on the site, a very, very tough site, which only got more difficult. And I'll explain that as we go further along. Um, but I, being local to Columbus and knowing quite a bit about the emergence of the Franklinton neighborhood, I knew that a, a concrete block building was not going to be contextual with the history of Franklinton, which as many of you know, is a brick warehouse uh, and, um, and brick masonry, um, uh, you know, uh, constructed uh, historical area of Columbus. Uh, it was the original site of Columbus before the uh, anything was built across the river. Uh, but because it was in the floodplain, the portion across the river took off and Franklinton uh, until just recently when the flood wall was finished was limited in how much development it could undertake because of, of, of periodic flooding. Uh, but with the uh, installation of the flood wall. Uh, now, Franklinton, as everybody knows, is the new darling of downtown Columbus, and basically the central business district has crossed the river now, and we're seeing all this marvelous new development. So um, I had heard through Kathy that the, and, and I may get this wrong, and Kathy can correct this later for you guys, but whoever the uh, the head of their particular Buddhist sect was uh, in the Western Hemisphere, had let Kathy and her staff know that he had a vision for Buddhist temples in the Western world and actually across the world. He really didn't want to see a an Eastern style pagoda building drop down into areas of other countries where it just didn't make any sense. He was looking for a contextual building. So you can see how well this is fitting in already from what I just described. Uh, and so our mission was to develop a contextual Franklinton building uh, that would look good in its place and be friendly to its neighbors, while at the same time, fulfilling the second part of his vision, which was once the parishioners got inside, then they wanted the shrine room to be very traditional. Uh, and so that's that was our mission going forward. So we started with the basic massing from the Milwaukee architect. Uh, and, uh, and the first thing that we discovered was that our sloping site and the uh, staff's desire to have an entrance right off the parking lot, such as it is, that's a different issue that Kathy can talk about, the gravel parking lot, but they wanted uh, an entrance off the parking lot that would be used day to day by staff. Uh, and so as soon as we knew that, and we also were, were still going to have the main entrance directly off of Rich Street, all of a sudden this two-story building, it started as a simple two-story building, uh, became a building that was kissing the sloping site at four different entrances. And so we went from a two-story 
project to there are four levels in this building. Uh, and, um, and that became quite complex to try and solve. I'm thrilled with the way that we solved it, by the way. We, we, were, we were successful in doing so. That was, that was the first challenge. So um, once we had crossed that point, then being kind of a conceptual guy and needing a design concept to be the basis for making decisions, I focused pretty heavily on the entrance sequence from the Rich Street side. Um, I proposed a very long, low slope switchback ramp along the entire uh, north face of the building, the Rich Street side, to um, basically to get the parishioners in a mindset uh, that was where they're ready for meditation. Uh, because they're coming right off of the hustle and bustle of the urban sidewalk, which is only going to get more uh, dense as Franklinton develops. In, Frank, in fact, uh, just to uh, uh, diverge real quick, I've, I've always seen this building as being the little remaining uh, uh, freestanding little object in the middle of an urban uh, bunch of high rises the same way as the movie Up, right? With the balloons lifting the little house out of uh, uh, New York City. Well, anyway, uh, I, I digressed. Uh, but eventually this is going to be a precious little object in an urban context. And so um, uh, by creating this low slope switchback ramp and then deciding to put the stupa at the mid landing, giving the parishioners not only time to take that slow down uh, walk to get into a meditative state, but at the at the uh, halfway point to contemplate the stupa on their way up, so that by the time they arrive in the in the entrance lobby, they hopefully are are in a mindset to to uh, participate in the shrine, the shrine room. So um, uh, Kathy, in, in their program, once they get to the lobby, then they go in to uh, remove their shoes. Uh, we provided uh, a way for them to do that. And then uh, they, they are about to experience my favorite part of the building. Kathy's going to think it's the shrine room, which I love very much. But she may or may not know that I love the monumental stair that connects the multiple levels of the project um, uh, and allows views through the open uh, uh, thick treads, the wood, uh, the wood treads, uh, so that someone that enters the building has a feeling for the overall three-dimensional space. Uh, I'm particularly proud of the way that that, that uh, was fulfilled. So once they then get to the top, and they get to the uh, outside lobby area of the um, shrine room on the second floor. Then they proceed towards the shrine room and uh, and enter the doors and are in the sacred space, the quiet space, uh, which then you know takes their eye up to the natural light from the uh, clear stories in the pergola at the top. Uh, and then we had additional light coming from the corners of the shrine room. So the whole area is bathed in light from above and then also from the curtain wall facing north and the corresponding windows facing south. Notice I didn't say curtain wall there uh, because I'll tell you another little problem we ran into. The site is so tight we had a vision for a similar curtain wall on the north and the south uh, because we wanted to get a whole lot of light into the building. Uh, but then the building department uh, reminded me that our project was so close to the property line on the south that we were required, we were limited in the total amount of uh, glazing area that uh, could be that close to the south property line. And so to deal with that, we used uh, non-vision glass uh, in addition to the area of vision glass, which is at the center 
of that glazing area that we created. So we still got from the outside, the kind of, of portal, if you will, large portal uh, that mimics uh, the large glass area to the north. So we were able to solve it uh, successfully on the exterior and the interior. Um, I'm still waiting for Kathy to completely decorate the, uh, the shrine room. Um, I understand that that's going to take a while, uh, but she has successfully sourced some very creative uh, woodworking uh, people to bring in the last remaining elements that are going to create the, uh, the shrine room and the shrine itself uh, in, in a way, in a dramatic way that, uh, that most Buddhist temples uh, uh, present to the worshipers uh, the complete package and even give them a way to do the walk, which she can describe and give it its real name. But we even have a particular path uh, in front of and behind the, uh, the shrine once it's installed uh, to, uh, to complete that experience. So, uh, Kathy, that pretty much sums up my, uh, my participation. It has been a pleasure um, we are thrilled with the way that it came out. We're also extremely pleased with the way that the Columbus community has uh, reacted to uh, to what we created together. So thank you. Uh, hey, thanks very much, Peter. And um, uh, we're really thrilled with the work and we can't wait to continue decorating it and uh, <laughs> making it into a beautiful building. I did have one question and that was, um, in the, uh, as you as you mentioned in your presentation, Franklinton is a changing area, and lots of older buildings are giving way to newer ones now. And uh, I'm I'm curious as to how you feel the this particular center building fits in with that uh, with that change. You mentioned a little bit about it. If you might say a little more. Sure, um, it's a, that's an easy answer. Uh, if you look at all the buildings, uh, the new high rises, the new buildings that are being created in Franklinton, it's wonderful to see uh, that they're employing a lot of very uh, modern uh, um, uh, design uh, uh, details to some of those buildings. However, if you look at the base of the buildings, they are very all very sensitive to the historic Franklinton brick masonry warehouse heritage. And so because ours is not a multi-story building, we very much look like the base of all of the buildings that are being developed regardless in Franklinton, regardless of their use. So that's my answer. I think it's going to fit in quite well. Well, um, I'm really, really excited about what's happening. We, we had a sense from the beginning that, uh, that the downtown might jump the river and start the bringing to urban business district to our neighborhood. And we're just so happy that uh, that you helped us be part of that. So I want to thank you for your presentation this evening, of course, and then for the beautiful work on our temple. Thank you very much. It, it, it's been a pleasure, the whole experience.